Hey there, guys. This is Cole. Welcome back to another movie review. Uh, I know I haven't posted a movie review in, I'd like to say, about a week or something like that. But uh, I've just been busy overall, and I haven't had time. And uh, uh, But today, the movie I'm going to be reviewing is the classic John Wick that came out about... <laughs> In 2014, so it's kind of crazy to believe that this movie is almost already 10 years old, but... Uh, now, how I was first introduced uh, to this movie... Now, before we get into it, I want to talk about uh, my history with Keanu Reeves movies and how I was introduced and how I became a fan of Keanu Reeves. Uh, the, first okay, the first movie I ever saw Keanu Reeves in was The Matrix, the first movie... Which I watched in, I, I don't, I, I would like to say I watched The Matrix, I don't remember. It was either 2018 or 2019, so around five or four years ago, and I thought The, I thought the Matrix was a great movie. In fact, I was such a huge fan of The Matrix that it made me want to check out the rest of the other movies Keanu Reeves did, and... At the time, I did not really know anything about John Wick or much of his other movies, but uh, a funny story, uh, a few years ago, uh, when they did a remake of the Stephen King movie Pet Cemetery, when I went to go see that in theaters with my dad's girlfriend, Kaylee, there was a trailer to John Wick 3, and I thought, ooh, okay, this kind of looks interesting, like, I'm like, okay, this kind of looks interesting. What is this? You know, what's this John Wick all about? And the third movie looked good, so I decided to check out the first two movies, which I don't remember if I rented the first movie at the library. Uh, I know for a fact I rented the second one at the Augusta Public Library, but I don't remember offhand and stuff like that. And I was such a huge fan of them. I wanted to see the... Th I didn't get a chance to see John Wick Chapter 3 in the theaters. I would have loved to have seen the third one in the theater, but... I'm not sure yet, but my dad said if I get time this week, I might go see John Wick Chapter 4 in theaters this week. And I'm so excited to see uh, John Wick Chapter 4. But uh, the first movie was great, and when the movie first came out, I mean... Nobody really expected anything from it because people just saw the trailer and they're like, whatever, it looks like a direct-to-video movie. But, however, when the movie came out, you know, people, you know, people loved it. It got great reviews by critics, so you know, people loved it. Everybody, you know, the movie, it was, I mean, the movie, it was a big box office hit. People loved it. It got great reviews by critics and it was so critically acclaimed that fans were demanding for a sequel to happen, and then we got two sequels, and then the fourth movie, which comes out this Friday, which I'm looking forward to seeing, and, uh, and I mean, yeah, there's a quote here that says, Keanu Reeves' best movie since The Matrix, which I can believe that, and, uh, and then, uh, there's a review here by, uh, by Joe Blow's movie, Emporium, or I probably butchered that, that says, A Wild and Bloody Ride, yeah, and then it says on the back, uh, Cinema's Next Great Badass is here, yeah, I, I agree with that 100%, and, uh, and I also, not only do I own, uh, the first John Wick on DVD, but, <sighs> I have right here the John Wick Trilogy, uh, the DVD set that comes with all three movies. Uh, as you can see, there's the first John Wick I have. Then there's Chapter 2, and I had Chapter 3, but I have no idea what happened to the DVD of the third movie. I think it might be in this house somewhere, or I left it at my grandma's. I have no idea what happened to the DVD of the third movie. And no, I don't mean Grandma Cheryl, Grandma Kelly, but... I think I let them borrow the third one one time, and I didn't get it back, but uh, I'll figure it out. If not, I might just buy the third movie separately, but but yeah, I love the John Wick movies, and uh, pretty much everyone else does too, and I'm really looking forward to the fourth movie, but, but yeah, uh, <clears throat> getting into this movie, I mean, you know, you got a good cat, I mean... This movie has a stacked cast. You got Keanu Reeves, of course, as the main character, John Wick. Other actors, you got Ian McShane, uh, who I've always enjoyed him as an actor. You got Lance Hedrick. You got Lawrence Fishburne. Uh, yeah, the actor who plays Morpheus from the Matrix movies. 
You got Bridget uh, Mohana, uh, who plays a character named Mrs. Wake. You got, uh, and you got Willem Dafoe, who plays a character who's a friend of John Wick that we'll get into with the review. But yeah, so basically the plot and story, it's a simple, straightforward. And also Keanu Reeves, uh, I, talking about others Keanu Reeves stuff. I've always liked Keanu Reeves as an actor, uh. I like the John Wick movies. I like the first. I like the first Matrix. That's it. I love the first Matrix. I love all three of the John Wick movies. I love Speed. Speed is a classic. Uh, I like Point Break with him and uh, Patrick Swayze. That's a good movie. I and also, I like the first two. I like the first two Bill and Ted movies. I have not seen the third yet, but I do like the first two Bill and Ted movies. And. Uh, and I also like Constantine. That's a pretty good underrated Keanu Reeves movie. But now, John Wick, I will say the first movie is the best of the John Wick movies. Uh, if we're just going objectively off quality, this probably, if we're going off quality, this probably is the best thing Keanu Reeves has done. I mean, it's not my personal favorite uh, Keanu Reeves movie. I would personally put speed above it, but because speed overall is my favorite but this would easily be in my top five in terms of my favorite keanu reeves movies and stuff like that and uh but i mean yeah the plot is pretty simple and straightforward so so the plot of the film uh so so the plot of the film is that and i like the whole story you know basically john wick the main character john wick is basically a former assassin he gets married loves his wife more than anything in the world and she dies and her last gift to him is this puppy this cute little dog and john comes to love the dog and one day he's out getting gas for his car after he bought the dog toys food and everything and some jerk named losov who's like who's basically a russian and he's basically uh he's basically the son of this mafia guy he calls john wick an a-hole and he basically tries to buy John Wick's car. And John Wick also calls him an a-hole right back. And then, and then you know, the, and then basically, you know, and then basically after that, you know, oh, and I forgot, you know, stuff like that. So, okay, so the movie starts off with, uh, it basically starts off with John Wick where it, it's, this plays into a part later on in the film, but it's only for like a minute or two, but basically it's where John Wick is coming out of the car. Like he's hurt and stuff like that. He's watching a video uh, on his phone, uh, something his wife said to him and stuff like that. And then we cut to uh, the beginning of the movie to where basically what happens with John Wick is that basically, you know, like uh, he's at his house and stuff like that. And uh, basically he gets a phone call that his wife is about to die from uh from cancer or whatever it is she has and his wife dies in the hospital and you really feel sad for John Wick you really do you feel the grief and the the loss that he has of his wife that he loves very much so in this movie and I think that's what this movie does an excellent job at doing here and then you know basically you know one day you know basically a woman with a package shows up makes John Wick you know sign some stuff like that and it's a package, and basically the package is a dog kennel with a cute little puppy in it. And then, of course, there's the scene where John Wick is uh, getting gas for his car. And then, of course, uh, the, uh, the guy who's like a Russian, who's like uh, the son of this mafia guy, he says to John Wick, you know, hey, nice car. And then John Wick's like, thanks. And then the guy asks him, how much is the car? And then John Wick's like, oh, I'm sorry, it's not for sale. And then the, the guy is like, how much is the car, you know, a-hole and stuff like that. And then I like the part where John Wick calls him an a-hole back and he gets all mad. But And then he drives away. And then basically that night, you know, basically John Wick goes to bed and stuff like that. And like, it's like 2 a.m. in the morning or something like that, where basically the dog is barking and stuff like that because the bad guys, you know, the guy, uh, the Russian who was the son of the mafia guy, basically he and a group, uh, basically him and his friends broke into John Wick's house. They mess up John Wick. They beat the crap out of him. And then we get to the sad part where, you know, basically the guy kills the, basically 
you know, the guy kills the dog's puppy and they killed the puppy in front of John Wick, you know, this dog he loved so much and stuff like that. And then they knock out John Wick and then John Wick wakes up the next day and stuff like that. And then he sees the dead dog and then he buries it in the backyard. And then basically John Wick, he's so triggered by this, he decides to set out to get revenge on these bad guys, on these a-holes who killed his dog because... Not only that, but they just screwed up his life and made it so much worse because John Wick loved his wife, but the puppy was a gift from his dying wife. So, and he grew to love the dog. So, basically, every and they, not to mention that, but they also stole John Wick's car. So, so basically, like his life, like they just screwed up his life even worse and stuff like that. And then the next night, John Wick, you know. He basically arms up with, uh, he basically puts uh, weapons on him, like uh, like guns and uh, knives in a boot and whatnot and stuff like that. And then, and then the second night, these bad guys break in, but John Wick hears them. He comes prepared. He's hiding behind some corners, and then he's fighting all these bad guys and stuff like that. And he's taking them out, and uh, he's basically taking them out and stuff like that, one by one and stuff like that. And, uh... Oh, and I forgot to mention at the beginning of the movie when uh, before uh, John Wick's wife, uh, after John Wick's wife dies, uh, a few seconds after that scene, we cut to a funeral with uh, John Wick and his friend. His friend is basically named Marcus and stuff like that, played by Willem Dafoe, who I've always liked as an actor. Uh, he played the Green Goblin in uh, the first Spider-Man movie and Spider-Man No Way Home. He was also... He also voiced one of the fish in Finding Nemo. He was also in Platoon, great Vietnam War movie. And he was also in Clear and Present Danger. And I've always liked Willem Dafoe as an actor. It was cool to see him in this movie. But getting back to what I said, basically John Wick. I mean, there's a lot of guys. Like, it's not just it's not just a couple of group of guys. Like, it has to be at least 15 people that were sent to John Wick's house, you know, to go kill him and stuff like that. And... John Wick basically messes them up. He stabs one of the guys and basically, you know, there's a like a police officer shows up at his house. And, you know, you could tell because of the uh, the the red and blue glow by the door and John Wick opens it. And then I like the part when the police officer, you know, I like the part when the police officer says to John Wick, he said the cop. I like the part when the cop says uh, knocks on the door and. and the humor in this is funny where the cop says, hey, hey, John, hey, Jimmy, you working again? And then John says, yeah, you know, cleaning up a little bit. And then the cop looks in and he sees the dead body. And then he's like, OK, I'll leave you alone. Like, like that was a nice thing to do because he could have reported John Wick to the cops and get him arrested. But he decided not to because he knows who John Wick is and what his business is. And then basically we cut to the part where, and also uh, the mob boss played by Ian McShane, uh, the Russian son I mentioned, who sent a group of people to basically kill the dog and steal his car. Basically that father is somebody John Wick used to work for. And I thought that was a really good plot twist that you didn't really see coming. And, uh, and basically, uh, and then he's like, and then the father punches the son in the face. He's like, the son is like, so what? I be he's like, so what? I killed the dog. I killed the guy's dog and I stole his car. And he said, the guy's just a nobody. And then the and then the father's like, and the father punches him in the face. He says that nobody. And then and then you know, of course, I'm probably messing up the lines, but basically, he says he says to the son, he said. He basically says to his son, it's not what you did, son. It's who you did it to. And that nobody is John Wick. And John Wick is not messing around because when he's talking about this, we get flashbacks to Keanu Reeves at home where basic or who plays John Wick. He's upset. He basically he walks downstairs. He takes a giant sledgehammer. He starts smashing of the he basically smashes the cement floor apart and basically opens up a trap door. And, you know, with all the weapons in there and he gears up and now he's basically after these guys to uh, get revenge and stuff like that. But I mean, like, but like, but yeah, that's just a great setup. And like, 
the plot once again. I like the I like the simple, straightforward plot. Like, I so like, and like uh, the mob boss. Uh, getting back to the mob boss played by Ian McShane. I thought Ian McShane's a good villain, a uh, good actor, but. I can't think of the other stuff he's been in off the top of my mind, but I have seen him in some other stuff, and he is a good actor. I like how the mob boss, you know, he's legitimately afraid of John Wick because he knows that John Wick is going to rain down an epic battle on anybody that is involved. And that's exact and you know, that's exactly what John Wick does in the course of the film. But I like and what an aspect I like about this movie. I think John Wick it's a great throwback to classic action movies because if you've if you've seen the classic James Bond movies the ones with Sean Connery you know I like the fact how in the movie John Wick there's basically this whole world uh basically it's basically a secret society of assassins and all these criminals and everything it's really cool in fact it reminds me of the it reminds me of the old James Bond movies the ones with Sean Connery where if you've seen the Sean Connery James Bond movies, you know that there's a because in the Sean Connery James Bond movies, there's a secret group of assassins called, you know, called the Spectre that's after James Bond. You know, it was night, you know, I thought, you know, this was a great tribute to that. And like there's just so many other great uh great stuff in this movie. And you know, and uh, like I said, you know, the story is just so simple and straightforward, and I like movies with simple plots, and the sequels build on it, which I'm glad they do, because, you know, the movies, they didn't feel like the same movies, because, you know, because these movies evolved with the story, but it's still the central idea that John Wick is not someone, and, you know, but the central idea is that you do not want to mess with John Wick, because he will mess you up. And that's what people learn in all three of the John Wick movies. Like, if you push him to his limits, he's going to push you back and let it feel it and stuff like that. John Wick does not mess around. And especially in the first movie, because, because like in the first John Wick, you know, in the first John Wick movie, which I have on DVD here, because in the first John Wick movie, uh, he had the only things left from his life that was taken away from him. Like, you know... The dog his wife gave him and his car, which were basically stolen from him and his dog was killed and those were taken away from him. And he and basically John Wick has to do what he has to do because he's upset that this group of people and you really feel sad for John Wick. You really do like this movie does a great job making a main sympathetic character, a likable character because you feel bad for John Wick like. You feel awful that these terrible people just killed his dog that his wife gave him and his wife is dead. And you want John Wick to mess up these bad guys because of the awful things that these people did. And then, of course, we get to the scene. Of course, we get to the scene in, uh, in the first movie here where and I like how his rampage is basically in New York City. And I like place. I like how it takes place in New York City. I mean, yeah. Yeah, in part two, he goes to Rome and uh, Morocco in part three, but but at, but I like how it all comes back to New York. It all comes back to his central location, and I love how the movies have a linear storyline in them, you know? You know, in terms of linear storyline, part one is in New York. Part two takes place a few days, and you know, part two, it take, part two only takes place for a sequel that came out three years after the first one, John Wick 2. It only takes place a few days after the end of the first movie. And then three only a few days after two and stuff like that. And the action sequences in these movies are top notch. Uh, the first 20 minutes or so I like of the first John Wick. Because because of how it just builds up. Like it just shows that. It basically shows that John Wick is dealing with the tremendous amount of grief of losing his wife. And like the bartenders and like the bar and you know, like the bartender says in this movie, I've never seen you like this. And John Wick is awesome in this movie. You know, John Wick, he's running around, he's shooting and killing people, but he's also a human. You know, John Wick, he's angry of losing his wife 
and now people complicate matters by killing his dog, stealing his car, making stuff way worse. He was upset and is now even more upset than he was originally. And I think a big part of the reason as to why the story works so well uh, with the first movie is that I think we can, I think everybody can relate to the fact that we can all relate to losing somebody we care about and everything complicates matters and makes us even more angry and stuff like that. And, uh, and also get into the part where I mentioned about Marcus, uh, basically earlier on in the movie, uh, the mob boss says to Marcus and Marcus is John Wick's friend played by Willem Dafoe. He asks Marcus, he tells Marcus, I will pay you a $2 million to kill John Wick and stuff like that. And the action sequences are great, especially the nightclub scene, because we get to the nightclub scene where uh, the mob boss, uh, his son, you know, the son who I said, basically the guy's son with the group of friends who killed his dog, they're basically at like this nightclub and stuff like that. And uh, and basically John Wick sneaks up. Uh, you know, he sneaks up behind one of the security guards and says to let him in. The security guard does and stuff like that. And John Wick says, let me in or I'll put a bullet through your brain and stuff like that. And then basically what happens is that there's this guy who, you know, basically a person who was involved with uh, John Wick, uh, basically involved with the whole thing of John Wick's dog dying and, you know, his wife dying and, and his car being stolen and stuff like that. And uh, basically John Wick grabs him and he's... And basically, John Wick basically asks for uh, where someone, where the boss is, and the guy says "screw you." And then John Wick uh, bashes his head on the, uh, on the basically on the side of the sink and says, "I will not ask you again." And then you know the guy basically tells him, you know, where the boss is and stuff like that. And then John Wick says, "You killed my dog and stole my car." And then basically, you know. He 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 drowns the guy in a, a sink of water and then basically snaps his neck. And then we cut to uh, the kid again, the kid who killed John Wick's dog. And uh, and basically John Wick is now after him and stuff like that. And the kid's running away from John Wick, you know, after John Wick is messing up some people and stuff like that. And then he's and then, you know, the bad guy, you know, the son is basically you know, he has a towel wrapped around him from a swim from like a, a pool he got out of and stuff like that. And then, and then John Wick is chasing after him. And then these security guards go up and try to stop John Wick. But the security guards are obviously the bad guys. And basically John Wick shoots them in a crowd of people dancing and stuff like that. And then one of the guys on the radio says, Wick's here, Wick's here. And then, you know, and then the son, and then, you know, of course the guy who's like the Russian son says, he says, everybody get out of here. John Wick's coming and stuff like that. And then John Wick appears and then he's messing up all these bad guys like he's shooting them left and right and stuff like that. And then basically he sneaks up into a room where with even more colorful, vibrant lights and stuff like that. And he's basically fighting. Uh, he fights one of the guys. He also grabs a guy who has a gun. He breaks the guy's arm and then shoots the guy who holding the gun in the face with his own gun and stuff like that. And then this bad guy manages to throw John Wick. Basically, John Wick has a bulletproof vest, but he gets shot by a gun and falls on the ground. But since he has a bulletproof vest, obviously he doesn't die. But John Wick kills somebody, then somebody goes right by him and then throws John Wick off a balcony either... The movie doesn't really, uh, it doesn't really say whether he broke his arm or sprained it, but he earned his arm bad enough and stuff like that. And then he basically goes to a hotel for the night and stuff like that. And then, uh, and then Marcus, uh, aka, uh, Willem Dafoe, who plays John Wake's friend, who was hired to kill him for $20 million, he shoots at John Wake, but not directly at him because he doesn't want to kill John Wake because, you know, John Wake is his friend and stuff like that. And then this character, Mrs. Wick, which uh, you see on the cover here, and the Willem Dafoe guy you see right here, uh, this guy with the sniper rifle is John Wick's friend, and this girl is basically who breaks into the hotel room, and she's like, hi, John Wick. And then, he, and then, uh, and then John, she says, I see you let yourself in, and then John Wick's like, yeah, I noticed. And then John Wick basically takes like a bed sheet or something like that, and then he starts to try to choke her and stuff like that, punches her and stuff like that. 
And then John Wick knocks. It basically, John Wick is asking for inf important information. She's like, F you. And then John Wick's like, do you really want to die holding a gun to her head? And then she gives gives John Wick the information she needs. Uh, No, she gives John Wick the information he needs. And then he says, thank you. And he doesn't kill the person, but like he takes the gun and he smashes her in the face, knocks her out. And then like, I like the part, uh, another part full of humor. Like if you remember the beginning, I mentioned when uh, the cop, well, you know, did not arrest John Wick. The same thing happens to a guy who who's at the hotel. He's like, you okay, John Wick? Yeah. And then he's just kind of looking at the person there like, okay, I'll let you do this. But basically, John Wick asked for him to watch her since she's knocked out unconscious. And then the next day, she's her arms are tied behind a chair, but she dislocates her thumb to basically escape. And she kills a uh, one of the friends of John Wick and stuff like that. And then John Wick uh, is basically still fighting all these bad guys. And then, you know, the Russian son guy, uh, the bad guy, once again, played by Ian McShane, he he basically, you know, uh, they base, you know, John Wick basically gets into a fight outside where uh, where he's doing great until a guy hits him with uh, until J a guy hits a car that John Wick is standing outside from. And then John, these guys knock John Wick out. John Wick passes out. He wakes up uh, with a plastic bag over his head. They take it off. And then Ian McShane says, "You're try the, the the villain played by Ian McShane says, you tried to kill my son. And then, and then John, Wick sa John Wick says, you took everything from me. He says, he says, my wife died and you killed my dog and you stole my car. So your son deserves what's going to happen to him. And and then John Wick says, people ask if I'm really back. He says, yeah, I think I'm back. And I'm going to win this war. And then they try to put the plastic bag on his head, choking him. But, of course, that doesn't happen and stuff like that. And on purpose, Marcus misses uh, the gunshot to shoot John Wick. And John Wick is basically messing up all the bad guys and stuff like that. And then basically, you know, not the Russian son, not the guy who's Russian, who's a son of the mob boss, but one of his friends is playing a video game on the couch and the the son of the mafia boss tells him to stop playing the game. And then basically he gets a sniper rifle to the head and dies. And then basically the son is ducking, you know, ducking for cover. And then he basically escapes the place. And then we get to the final part of the movie, the action bits, where it's nighttime, you know, basically John Wick is driving in his car at nighttime, all these people are after him, John Wick is uh, shooting at people while also driving in the car and stuff like that, and then we get to the part where he's fighting the last bad guy outside who's still alive, who, and it's, he's fighting a bad guy in the rain and stuff like that, and the visuals are really nice in this movie, where... So the bad guy basically stabs John Wick uh, with a knife and stuff like that, and he's bleeding. He t and then John Wick takes the knife out and then stabs the bad guy, and then you know like he's punctured, of course. And then we cut, and then of course we cut back to the part of the beginning of the movie where John Wick came out the car injured, holding the phone and stuff like that. And then basically John Wick shows up at like this animal rest, uh, <laughs> animal animal shelter with all these dogs and all these cute pets and stuff like that and John Wick is basically uh putting some hydrogen peroxide or whatever it is that you pour over wounds and then he uses a staple gun you know and of course is hurt by it and then and then at the end of the movie he gets a cute little he gets not a little dog like at the beginning of the movie but he gets a cute dog gets basically like a gray bulldog he walks out the building. He's like, all right, buddy, let's go home. And the movie ends there. And yeah, the movie ends perfectly with him getting his new dog, him saying, let's go home. It sets up the sequels perfectly. And uh, yeah, if you guys have never seen John Wick, what are you doing? You need to watch John Wick since the fourth movie comes out this week. Absolute classic. Uh, like I said, you know, the movie, it came out, it got praised. Everybody loved it. There's definitely, there's a reason people love it. There's a reason we're getting a fourth movie and I am really excited for the fourth movie. And what John Wick once again is, you know what? I'm going to say it. John Wick is a modern, it's a modern, you know, John Wick is a modern classic movie. 
and it, in this movie, it John Wick, it'll forever stand the test of time. It'll forever stand the test of time. And that was, you know, once again, it was critically acclaimed and rightfully so. People, it was critically acclaimed by critics, rightfully so. And people still enjoyed the movie to this day and will continue to enjoy it for many years to come, including myself, which, you know, I wish I would have had the chance to see the third movie in the theaters when I found out about these movies, but it is what it is. And I cannot wait to see John Wake Chapter 4 in the theaters and, uh, and yeah, that's my lengthy but in-depth review of John Wick. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, love this series. I'm I'm definitely excited to review the John Wick sequels, including four, and then I'll end this off on a franchise ranking and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, uh, that was my in-depth review of John Wick. Again, great movie. I cannot praise this movie any more than I already have. And of course, you already know that the movie it get. It's a timeless classic. This movie, I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. It's a perfect movie. Not only is it one of the best action movies, just one of the greatest movies of all time in general. So yeah, that was my review of John Wick. And see you guys. And I hope you enjoyed it. And see you guys later. See you.